بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين يقول الله تعالى إنما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء ويقول أيضا وقل اعملوا فسير الله عملكم والمؤمنون أرحب بالزملاء والضيوف والحضور من جميع أنحاء المعمورة في هذا اليوم العالمي الذي يطلق عليه اليوم العالمي للمرأة والفتاة في مجال العلوم وتحتفل الإيسيسكو بعام عشرين واحد وعشرين والذي أطلقت عليه عاما للمرأة وكم هو شرف كبير وسعادة غامرة بأن تحظى الإيسيسكو بتكريم كبير من جلالة الملك محمد السادس نصره الله وأيده برعاية كريمة لهذا العام بجميع مناشطه وبرامجه Excellences, dear colleagues, we're honored and pleased to welcome you all today from all over the globe, celebrating the International Day for Women, Girls, and Science, a day that makes a milestone for our young generation, a day that we believe that science is the future for us and for our children. And without science, we will all live in darkness. ICISCO have proclaimed 2021 as the year for women for a number of reasons. Women has been in the front line in 2020. They shouldered most of the difficulties at home, at work, and everywhere. So it's needless to say that they deserve to be recognized of what they have done for all of us. We're proud of them, of them and we hope that Isisco have given them what they deserve. So the year will be filled with activities, programs, conferences that will focus on women, not just only in science, education, and culture, but in their rights also. Our theme for our conference today is bridging the gap or closing the gap in science for girls. And we have selected and chosen a number of very prominent speakers. And we hope that the day, that by the end of the day, we will learn quite a lot from those uh, speakers. Let me start by introducing at the opening ceremony, we have three prominent ladies whom, in my opinion, have made a lot and have been very successful in their lives. Her Excellency, Ms. Mehriban Alieva, First Lady and First Vice President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, her Excellency Dr. Amina Gureyb Fakim, former President of Republic of Mauritius, and Her Royal Highness Princess Sumayya bint al Hassan, President of the Royal Scientific Society of Georgia. We're doing this day in collaboration with two of our prominent partners, Linkit. 
as a member of the Leibniz Associate in Germany and Space Foundation. I will start by introducing our first speaker, Her Excellency Ms. Mahriban Alieva, first Vice President of the Republic of Azerbaijan. In 1981, she graduated from the secondary school, number 23, in the city of Baku with distinction and entered Azerbaijan State Medical Institute, named after Nariman Narimov, preventive treatment faculty. In 1988, she graduated from the first Moscow State Medical Institute named after Ms. Shizinov with distinction also. In 1988-1990, she passed medical clinical residency in eye diseases department at the first Mos Mos Moscow State Medical University. In 1988-1992, she worked at the Eye Disease Scientific Research Institute in Moscow. 1995, Mariban Alieva founded Azerbaijan Culture Foundation, which she currently heads. In 1996, she founded Azerbaijan Heritage Magazines, which is published in three languages, Azerbaijan, English, and Russian, in order to widely promote the Azerbaijan culture. In October 2002, Mariban Alieva was selected as president of Azerbaijan Gymnastic Federation. Mariban Alieva has, had, has headed the Haider Aliyev Foundation since 2004, which was founded to study the rich political legacy and promote the national statehood ideas of national leaders of Azerbaijan Haider Aliyev. In August 2004, Mariban Alieva was named Goodwill Amb Ambassador of UNESCO for her role in protecting, in protection and development of Azerbaijan intangible folks, literature, and national musical legacy. December 2004, Mariban Alieva was elected as a member of the Executive Committee of NOC at the Fourth General Assembly of the National Olympic Committee of the Republic of Azerbaijan. She's been a member of the new Azerbaijan party's political council since 2004 and a deputy chairman of the party since 2013. In 2005, she received an academic degree of PhD in philosophy. From 2010 to 2015, Maribane Alivia was selected as a member of the parliament at the third, fourth, fifth convocation of the Mili Majlis of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Please welcome with me first Vice President, Ms. Mariban Alieva, for her recorded speech. Thank you. Suleiman Malik, Director General of ISESCO, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. First of all, I would like to thank the Director General for his kind invitation to participate as a guest of honor in such an important event. It's a big honor for me, and I consider this invitation as a sign of appreciation of our policy to develop women education and science. I commend the Islamic World Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization for its noble mission to protect the Islamic cultural heritage and to promote education and science in the Muslim world. And note with appreciation the fruitful cooperation between Azerbaijan and ISESCO. I praise the Director General for the attention given to the topic under discussion in the line with the United Nations General Assembly resolution that declared 11 February as the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Dear friends, science, technology, and innovation all become necessary to address global challenges. Science and gender equality are vital for the achievement of international development goals, including the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. I would like to congratulate ISESCO on its initiative to proclaim 2021 as the Year of Women. 
This is not only the manifestation of the importance attached by the organization to the role of women in our societies. This is also the recognition of their unique contribution to a better and safer world. We must pay tribute to all those women who today are the front line of confronting the COVID-19 pandemic as a doctors, medical scientists, and healthcare workers. We can be proud of the critical role paid by women researchers in different stages of the fight against COVID-19, from developing techniques for testing to creating vaccine against the virus. I am very proud to come from the country well known to the world, not only the, for the drilling of the world's first industrial oil well, opening the first opera in the Orient, or more importantly, establishing the first democratic republic in the Muslim world more than one century ago. Azerbaijan has also entered history as one of the first nations in the world to provide women with the right to vote and to be elected back in 1918. As to girls' education, the first secular school for girls in the Muslim East was opened by Azerbaijani philanthropist Zainal Abdin Takdi in my native town of Baku back in 1901. Today, the literacy rate in Azerbaijan is close to 100%. 55% of students in master course, 51% of PhDs at higher educational institutions, 46% of doctor of science degree holders, and 56% of researchers in our country are women. Women represent 59% of the overall staff of Azerbaijani National Academy of Science. At the same time, in our rapidly changing world, it is important that the education of girls and their participation in science should be adequate to new challenges. Globally, girls make up only 35% of students who study in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects. In our country, this number is 40% higher than the world's average. As I mentioned before, many Azerbaijani women have made great contributions to science and have been the source of true inspiration for girls and young females to be engaged in science. But what is important today is to create more favorable conditions for our girls and young women to continue to improve their levels of involvement and to keep filling the gender gap in science. As one example, I can mention a pilot project we recently started with UNDP called Women in STEM Mentorship Program that links young female professionals and students with STEM role models so that they receive the advice they need to address the challenges faced in their education and careers. Ladies and gentlemen, we all agree that science, technology, and innovation are important drivers of socioeconomic development of the societies around the world. In my capacity as ISESCA Goodwill Ambassador, I would call on all member states to invest more in these sectors, develop necessary policies and joint action plans. We need to design innovative financing mechanism to equip women and girls with necessary skills for tomorrow's labor market. Azerbaijan is ready to provide its contribution in this regard. Dear participants, on a separate note, I would like to take this opportunity to express my deep gratitude to the ISESC and personally to Director General Dr. Salim Al-Malik for the valuable support during last year's 44-day patriotic war, as a result of which Azerbaijan liberated its occupied territories after almost 30 years of occupation by Armenia, and thus restored historical justice. One month ago, at the invitation of, Azer of President of Azerbaijan, a delegation of ISESC, led by the Director General, visited Azerbaijan. Our guests have a chance to visit some of our liberated lands and witness with their own eyes the scope of destruction and vandalism, including tens of desecrated mosques and hundreds of destroyed historical monuments. 
Now the government faces a huge task to bring life back to liberated territories and ensure the return of Azerbaijan internally displaced persons to their native lands. And we will do it. We will restore destroyed cities and villages. We will build schools therein. We will restore the cultural heritage, and not only of Islamic origin, but of all religions as a whole. We highly appreciate ISESCO's readiness to work with the government of Azerbaijan, assessing the damage to Azerbaijan's cultural heritage sites destroyed during occupation. Also, please accept our special gratitude for considering the opening of ISESCO regional office in Azerbaijan, which among other fields could strengthen our cooperation in the field of science with a specific focus to increase the role of women and girls in science. To conclude, I wish ISESCO every success in its noble and important work. I wish to all the participants and your families good health, happiness, and best of luck. Thank you. Thank you, first Vice President of Azerbaijan, for those for these uh, very encouraging words. For one, for the Cisco, and second, for also the scientists. Uh, I really appreci appreciate your participation. Uh, felt very proud that you've been with us today, and rest assured that Cisco will always support all its member states in education, culture science and environment. Once again, thank you again. Thank you. I just t would like to say once again that uh, I welcome you all. And this is really a glory for ICISCO to give us a boost um, that we really need to do more and bring the best from all. You are our partners. And we really kindly request you that if you have any suggestions for what to do for the year 2021 as the year for women, we would welcome all uh, these suggestions. And we'll make sure that it is being implemented. I will move for our next prominent honorable speakers. Her Excellency Professor Dr. Amina Grape fakim she obtained her bachelor degree in chemistry from University of Surrey in 1983, and then a PhD from the University of Exeter from United Kingdom in 1987. During her academic journey, she has participated in several consultations meeting on environmental issues organized by international organization. Between the year 2011-2013, she was elected and served as the chairperson of the International Council for Scientific Union, Regional Office for Africa, and also served as an independent director of the board on the board of Barclays Bank uh, of Mauritius uh, between 2012 and 2015. She became the president of the Republic of Mauritius. And now I think she is back to what she loves, science. I would welcome Professor Fakim once again. Thank you for joining us at this important day. The floor is yours. Your Excellency, please, can you activate your microphone, please? Your Excellency, please. Yes. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> Apologies. <clears throat> Just one second. Sorry about this. Um, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be here today, and I would like to thank Dr. Malik and also the ISESCO for their kind invitation 
to associate me with this event and to share some thoughts on the critical importance of access to quality education with special attention to innovation and STEM programs, of course, with emphasis on the inclusion of women and girls. Ladies and gentlemen, in September 2015, the UN General Assembly declared February 11th as the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, coinciding with adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, also known as Agenda 2030. The SDGs are built on a strong foundation of science, technology, and innovation, the STI, with a consistent call for gender equality throughout. The standalone goal on gender equality is bold and clear and has the potential to reverberate across the world. The SDGs provide an opportunity to commit to a new mindset, one that disrupts inertia and discard all prejudices, introducing new ideas that are big, creative, realizable, and sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, the global education gender gap has seen impressive declines across the world. Notwithstanding this impressive gain, UNESCO is still reporting that the gender gaps in education persist. The gap widens when one moves beyond education to factor in future employment and wage earnings. In fact, the World Economic Forum Global Gender Gap 2018 reports that Sub-Saharan Africa still has an average remaining gap of 33.7%. Nonetheless, we see opportunity for women and girls to advocate for their interest, rights, and social transformation, particularly through ICT and in college, women are catching up in science and mathematics. Businesses are realizing that a more diverse workforce adds shareholder value. Ladies and gentlemen, STI have the power to disrupt and shift trajectories as STI increasingly influences all aspects of life today, not just careers directly in the sciences. STI solutions are required to grow business and social enterprise, improve health outcomes, including sexual and reproductive health, provide clean energy, manage the environment, and develop infrastructure. The SDG gender goal directs the global community to enhance the use of enabling technology, in particular, information communications technology to promote the empowerment of women. The ability of women to access, benefit from, develop influence and lead these sectors will directly impact whether we achieve the Planet 5050 goal to make national commitments to address the challenges that are holding women and girls back from reaching their full potential by 2030. Ladies and gentlemen, signs serve as the basis for informed decision-making and effective impact assessment in all sectors. Of course, having women in leadership positions in science, business, and public office is a powerful signal for both men and women. Just think of the iconic role model of Marie Curie more than 100 years ago after winning her two Nobel Prizes. And here, I would like to pay tribute to the Nobel Prize winners who are speaking on this panel today. Ladies and gentlemen, if women are left out of full participation in the 21st century aspirations, we will not achieve gender equality, nor realize our scientific goals. We simply cannot afford to draw from anything other than 100% of our talent pool if we are serious about transforming African and global economies into sustainable enterprises driven by innovation rather than depending on the exploitation of our natural resources. No team could ever contemplate a win by leaving 52% of the team on the bench. We need more women who can raise awareness and lead by example. And I'm looking to the present generation to carry forward this torch. Unfortunately in Africa, as in the developed world, the number of women in STEM declined steadily on the arc from secondary school to university, laboratories, teaching, policymaking, decision-making, and leadership. There are great divides in women's access to, participation in, and leadership 
within SDI sectors, despite being on the front lines of pandemics, energy use, climate change adaptation, economic production, and as protectors of extensive traditional knowledge. In the formal SDI sector worldwide, women make up under 10% of those in innovation hubs and funding by venture capitalists, and only around 5% of membership in national academies in science and technology disciplines. We are similarly underrepresented in research and development, publication, leadership in government, the private sector, and so on. We must address urgently the disconnect between the interest and the ability of women to provide brain power and their inclusion in the formal power structure of science. The reasons for this disconnect are many, ranging from access to technology, to education and investment gaps, to unsupportive work environments, to cultural belief and customs around childcare, and to persistently diminishing stereotypes. Globally, girls demonstrate no less interest in science and mathematics, education, primary school, and do boys, then start to select themselves out of STEM courses early in secondary schools. Societal attitude and bias hinder girls' self-confidence and ambition, with science and technology often considered male domains. But change is coming, slowly but steadily. Pressing ahead, making yourself heard, pulling each other up, and making a lasting impact on your world, that is what we must do for the benefit of all. We need to celebrate the incredible achievements of women in science, technology, and innovation, and galvanize the global community to do more, to ensure that women's participation in the formal sector is not the exception, but the rule. In the informal sector, where women's ingenuity is already the rule, we must be awarded commensurate recognition and support. The International Day for Women in Science is an annual reminder of these opportunities and obligations, holding us accountable for advancing women in science, technology innovation to achieve gender equality, and by extension, our development goals. This ambition is complex and deep, but it starts at the most basic level in the education of children. Parents, teachers, and community leaders influence how young women choose their career path. That choice begins early in school and continues all the way through higher education. When science is rejected as a career choice, it is often due to limited information and the dearth of positive role models to encourage young girls to participate. We all know that the family unit may be the most influential factor, so parents must be brought in early so that they can learn of the opportunities for their children. To many poor and rural parents, these are not only beyond their exposure, but also beyond their imagination. This is where governments have a key role to play in promoting the position of women in the labor market. Affordable childcare, parental leave, and workplace flexibility are all critical youth tools for equal opportunity. Equal pay, better opportunities for women, promote diversity, reduce inequality and boost economic growth for everyone. In Africa, ladies and gentlemen, women feed the continent. Agriculture is closely linked to women emancipation and that is why they must be empowered with knowledge, technology, financial resources and land. Increasing women's access to finance mechanism and removing the legal barriers that still exist in many countries are among the ways to make sure that women can stay in the workforce. Also, in the fast-paced world of scientific research in particular, any long period away from the lab threatens the ability to be creative, publish, and be rewarded by colleagues as a productive asset. Fortunately, many countries are getting the message about the need for gender equality. The G20 nations, representing 85% of the world's GDP, and two thirds of its population have pledged to reduce the gap in labor force participation rates between men and women by 25% by 2025, and to create over 100 million more jobs contributing to economic opportunity and poverty reduction for all. As admirable as this goal may be, the sober fact is that at this rate, it would take over 150 years 
to achieve full economic gender equality. Are we prepared to wait that long? Certainly not. Our generation of women and our daughters has the opportunity and the power to bend the arc of history towards greater gender equality and more inclusive global growth. It is a moral and economic imperative that we bring our collective weight to bear to achieve a future much sooner than a century and a half from now. Women must sustain the momentum by voting with our time, our wallets, our social media account. We should be able to run our homes as well as run for office, learn the ropes to climb the corporate ladder and become successful entrepreneurs. In doing so, we show the way for younger women. As Madeleine Albright said, there is a special place in hell for those women who do not help other women. It is our sacred and privileged duty as successful women to create a club of giants in leadership position, become the best versions of ourselves in numbers that cannot be dismissed. We must hire more women, them, promote civility among us. Much remains to be done. I'm eternal and confident that it will be done because it must be done. One of the great gifts of leadership is the opportunity to work every day for the next generation, leading by example, learning from their insight and sharing ideas to keep the momentum going. Only in this way will we ensure that equal work and equal pay become a global reality and that women's right will be fully respected because after all, women's rights are civil rights and civil rights are human rights. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Amina. I wish the day is long, we would not ask you to stop because in every word that you said, it means a lot, not just only to women and girls, but also uh, to all of us. Your advices, your experience that you shared with us, your thoughts are very important. And I'm sure that many of those who have listened to your speech will take uh, a lot of them. Once again, uh, I would like to read and rahab the Sephara al Kiram al Ladina Hadaruna, one Mathili Sephara fi al Mamlek al Marabiya, Mamatin al Bildanim, where Musharaketna fi had al Yum al Dawli. Walakin you read and Akul Maratan Ukra, be in the Had al Mutamar Yahmil fi Tayati al Kathir, Say Sharikna, Say Sharikna had al Yum Alimat and Sana and Majdin. ليس لأنفسهن ولا لبلدانهن ولكن للعالم أجمع فعلى سبيل المثال اثنتان حصلنا على جائزة نوبل في عام 2018 بروفيسور فرانسيس أرنولد في كيمستري وبروفيسور دونا ستريكلند في فيزيكس I will move to, my, to our third honorable distinguished speaker someone who had been with us in 2019 and in this hall, and she addressed the Conference of Environment in a very legendary speech at that time. Her Royal Highness, Princess Sumaya bint al Hassan, a very well known uh, uh, woman. She is currently leading advocate, she is currently a leading advocate for science as a catalyst for change. She is dedicated, she is a dedicated science enabler in the Arab world, where so many challenges urgently require science-based solution. The princess has worked forever, sorry, the princess have worked for over a decade to help foster an environment for homegrown solution to be found for pressing issues facing the region. Her Royal Highness is a president of the Royal Scientific Society, chair of the Princess Samaya University for Technology, and a vice chair for the Jordan Museum. In June 2017, 
the Director General of UNESCO appointed Her Royal Highness as UNESCO Special Envoy for the Science for Peace. This unique honor recognizes Her Royal Highness' efforts to contribute to combine science and research with cultural heritage to foster peace, opportunity, and prosperity. Princess Sumaya was chair of the World Science Forum in 2017, which was held in Jordan under the theme of Science for Peace under the patronage of His Majesty King Abdullah II. In August 2020, the Director General of UNESCO appointed Her Royal Highness as UNESCO Goodwill, Amb Good Goodwill Ambassador for Science for Peace. Her Royal Highness joined the board of the Amman uh, Baccalaureate School in 2005. She believes strongly in the importance of creative education from earliest stages to drive positive change in the region. I welcome Her Royal Highness Princess Sumaya joining us and delivering her speech today. Welcome, the floor is yours, Princess Sumaya. Thank you so much, Dr. Salim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala nabi al-Arabi al-Ameen. Um, assalamu alaikum jami'an. Uh, Mrs. Your Excellency, Mrs. Mahriban Alieva, First Lady and First Vice President of the Republic of Azerbaijan. Your Excellency, Professor Dr. Amina Ghureyb Fakim, former President of the Republic of Mauritius. Your Excellency, Dr. Salim Al Malik, my dear friend, Director General of ISESCO. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very great privilege to be virtually back in that hall, as Dr. Salim mentioned, um, and I'm missing Morocco and Isesco very much at this moment. And it is a very great privilege to address you at the opening of this vital celebration of the International Day of Women and Girls in Science, held under the enlightened patronage of His Majesty King Mohammed VI of Morocco. I applaud the vision of ISESCO led by Dr. Salim Al Malik, along with LICAT and the Space Foundation. In bringing together such a diverse and qualified array of contributors, both at the ISESCO headquarters in Rabat and virtually around the world. As we all become accustomed to this new way of doing things, it is perhaps a perfect time to examine more closely the failings of the past and to address inclusion in a world that has changed so very suddenly. I could not be more in agreement with our theme today, that narrowing the gender gap starts with science. It is regrettable that so far into this new century, we must still focus on the issue of gender imbalance in science, research, and innovation. Yet despite increased opportunities for girls and young women to pursue careers in STEM, barriers remain throughout the world that make equality of engagement and opportunity of a sustained and unacceptable challenge. This is an imbalance that damages all our societies and deprives our global human family of so much potential for progress and positive change. And real change is in all our interests. Indeed, never has the presence of women in research and innovation been more sorely needed. The sustainable development goals are set for all of us. We each have a stake in the future and an equal right to contribute to it. Throughout the developing world in particular, our burgeoning youth often sees little hope for a stable and prosperous future. It is therefore inconceivable that the talent, drive and compassionate creativity of half of our population should not be encouraged, empowered and utilized to the full. We must all use our intelligence and our compassion to address the interlinked stresses on energy, food, water and the environment which pose unprecedented existential threats 
to all our people. These are challenges that only science empowered by a stoical political will can solve. And women must play a vital role in this arena. Crucially, we must avoid or correct those negative perceptions towards STEM that young girls so often develop at an early age. A belief that girls should not or cannot do science. There is no doubt that women in the Middle East and around the world need strong role models to guide and encourage them. As we watched and celebrated the successful realization of the Emirati mission to place a probe in orbit around Mars just a few days ago, how wonderful it was to see and hear the astoundingly talented chair of the UAE Space Agency, Agency share this success with the world. How many young girls will have been inspired by Sara Al Amiri? How many will have been given hope and ambition to reach the stars? The truth is, we have no shortage of our own homegrown success stories. We simply need to make sure that they are heard. The Women in Science Hall of Fame program at my university, the Sumeya University for Technology in Amman, is an effort to redress the silence that often surrounds women who are or have been in science. Here we honor women in our region from a variety of scientific disciplines for their achievements and their ability to motivate young women to pursue scientific careers. For women in all societies must be empowered to feel connected to one another and to the world beyond. They must receive the education and the motivation that they deserve so that they may thrive. Our priority must be to encourage girls and young women to recognize their potential and to pursue opportunities in science. And let us define what we mean by empowering women. It does not mean giving women chances that they do not deserve. And it certainly does not imply that women should be treated more beneficially than men. It simply means we're equalizing opportunities so that women may study, learn, create, and thrive. The power is within us already. The power is within us already. We simply need the opportunities to unlock it. Indeed, let us forget for a moment about women in science. Let us remember that science is in women. The potential to innovate within our girls, it is part of their human DNA. They are owed a future that will enrich society beyond measure if today's society will permit it. But there is much to do. In the words of last year's Global Gender Gap Report, without the equal inclusion of half of the world's talent, we will not be able to deliver on the promise of the fourth industrial revolution for all of society, grow our economies for greater shared prosperity, or achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. The way we meet today highlights the necessity to ensure equal access to the tools of empowerment so that all talent may shine. According to a separate report by the OECD published in Chile in 2019, policy-led efforts in education and skills are vital in order to bridge the growing digital gender divide. It states that for both women and men, being able to harness the potential of the digital transformation is a keystone of more sustainable and inclusive economies and societies. However, women are still lagging behind in their ability to access, use, and afford digital tools. They are also facing cultural barriers and stereotypes that affect their expectations and may lead them to choose career paths that are not necessarily those that the increasingly digitalized and interconnected world rewards. We must all work for equal access and we must ensure fair and balanced use of the resources essential to modern life. We must also check 
our own innate prejudices. A recent study in the context of our new normal of Zoom calls and other virtual engagement found that women are systemat systematically seen as less authoritative in these contexts. Indeed, almost half of US women business leaders surveyed by Brigham Young University in September 2020 said it was difficult for women to speak up in virtual meetings. One in five women felt they had actually been ignored on such calls. So ladies and gentlemen, let this virtual meeting be a new beginning for all of us. Ladies, please check yourselves. Check within to see if you are feeling heard and if you are acknowledging your value and your right to be heard. Gentlemen, please check yourselves too. Check that your mind is as receptive in facts delivered by female voices as by male ones. The truth is we're all brought up with often unrealized prejudices, biases that would be so appalled if we notice them in others. So we all have so much to do with ourselves and with others to ensure that these prejudices, prejudices do not carry forward to the next generation. Let us evolve as we grow. It's never too late to learn about ourselves as we teach others. And ladies and gentlemen, policy interventions are essential to make real change and to give regional and global science the full benefit of women's participation. There is so much to do to ensure that women thrive and that society benefits from our contributions. We must also ensure that we are all listening, engaging and changing mindsets for the better, not least our own. I wish you all every success with today's sessions and I wish you all a very happy International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you very much, Your Royal Highness, for this outstanding speech that really show how much you are involving yourself and putting yourself in the driving seat for supporting women and girls. Once again, thank you, and we really appreciate your uh, being with us today. Now, I will deliver the speech of uh, Isisco. Her Excellency, Mr. Mariban Alieva, Her Royal Highness Princess Sumaya bint al Hassan, Her Excellency, Professor Amina, Dr. Amina Grabe Fakim. Honorable delegates of participant countries and international organization, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased and honored to inform you that under the patronage of His Excellency, of His Majesty King Mohammed VI, the King of Morocco, ISISCO is celebrating the 2021 as the ISISCO Year for Women. Today, event. International Day of Women and Girls in Science is part of this celebration in collaboration with our partner, LICAT and Space Foundation, under the theme, Narrowing Gender Gap, Start with Science. An ambitious program for women for the future is being set, is being set up at ESISCO, in which we plan to organize activities to empower women in several areas and help them to overcome different challenges, especially in science, and to play active role in achieving sustainable development goals. Excellencies, every woman is a scientist. She understands, she experiments, she observes, she measures, she communicates, and she concludes. But more importantly, she invents and always is creative. As much as women make wonderful home, we need them to build a prosperous, peaceful, resilient world, a world full of knowledge and innovation. Two Nobel Prize recipients, a great scientist, 
Miss Mary Curry says, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. You must believe in yourself, otherwise no one will believe in you. Tackling the challenges of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda will require the participation of everyone, and this cannot be achieved without working on narrowing the gender disparity in STI and empowering women in science and engineering. Despite numerous efforts made to involve women and girls in science and education, with an increasing number of girls enrolling in science studies, many drops out before reaching the higher level in their research careers. Only 28.8% of the world's researchers are women, and only 27% of all countries have reached gender parity in 2016. This is the result of inappropriate policies established at various levels, in addition to social and cultural factors. We need to act and transform the situation now. Indeed, as part of its renewed vision, and because the word scientist is a gender neutral term, ICISCO advances and it protects equally the contribution of female male scientists. ICISCO will now revitalize its effort and will use all its resources to empower women in science, technology, education, and culture. It stands ready to collaborate with other countries, institutions, and stakeholders to provide opportunities for women and girls to make their names and to enhance and reinvigorate their role in science and technology. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today I commit on the behalf of ESESCO that we shall not only develop programs to empower women and provide them with scholarship for higher ed studies, but also ensure that all ESESCO funding opportunities are provided on a merit basis and an equal footing for all women in our member state. The time has come that we outline the future by empowering and inspiring our young girls who have been deprived the opportunities in the past. Every one of us is born with an ample talent which we can which can be discovered by narrowing the gap, by narrowing the gender gap and delivering quality education. Let me conclude by conveying my deepest gratitude to His Majesty King Mohammed VI for accepting to bring the ISISCO celebration of the women year under his patronage. I also extend my appreciation to Linkat a member of Leibniz Association in Germany and the Space Foundation for, the, for, the, for their collaboration in preparing for this event and all other institutions present at this event and our speakers. Thank you very much.